Hello, and welcome to this special edition of C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. In this episode, I'm going to cover what is probably a very unexpected interpretation of a hexadecimal literal in C and C++. Yesterday, I posted this tweet asking what the return value and type from our val function should be. And a lot of people who responded to this got kind of caught up in the idea that this is an auto-return type and this is somehow specific to weird c ness but really I assure you, this is just a C heritage kind of thing. And I believe most compiled languages are going to run into something similar at some point in their code. So, spoiler alert, the correct answer actually is the third answer. The value is 1, and it is an unsigned 32-bit integer. And I'm going to explain why now. The first important thing to know when looking at our integer literals in C or C++ is that the minus sign is not actually part of the number. And you can see that here in the grammar for our integer literals. There are prefixes for binary, hexadecimal, and decimal, and postfixes for unsigned and long, but there is no minus prefix. This is actually something that is applied to the number after it is parsed. So moving down to table 5 of section 2.13.2 of the C++ standard, and now I'm looking at the latest draft standard here, but this should be the same with any copy of the standard that you happen to have on hand, you can see that a decimal literal is always going to be signed unless you explicitly apply a u suffix to it to ask for an unsigned value. Binary, octal, and hexadecimal literals, on the other hand, are going to use the smallest possible type that can hold the value and represent the value that you want it to be. So, in our case of a 32 bits value that fills in all of the bits, we are asking essentially for an unsigned 32-bit integer because this is the smallest thing that can accurately represent the value that we are asking for. So if we move on to the Compiler Explorer, we can demonstrate what is going on here. So we have here in the Compiler Explorer a 64-bit ARM GCC 5.4 a 64-bit Visual C++, and a 64-bit GCC 7, and a 32-bit Intel GCC 6.3. And in all of these, we are getting the value 1 returned from our function. And so, to illustrate what exactly is going on, as I said, the compiler is going to use the smallest type. It is going to prefer signed, but it will move to unsigned if it must. So we are giving it 32 bits. We are essentially giving it this. which is 32 ones filling out all of the bits of a 32-bit integer. Therefore, it gives us an unsigned value. Now, it is going to negate this value, and to do that, it is essentially going to apply a twos complement. Twos complement to negation in binary math is to complement all of the bits and then add one to it. And if you don't know what this means, I strongly suggest that you go and look this up. And this is why understanding your hardware and understanding what the computer is doing is important to programming. So we're going to complement the bits, and we're going to get this, and then we are going to add one to it to complete our twos complement, and we are going to get the value one. And we can prove to ourselves that this has nothing to do with the fact that we are using an auto return type from our vel if we do this. We can even bake this into a static assert and it is going to still compile, although not all of our compilers support the latest C++17 here, so I have to give it a static assert message. So this compiles, and we can even kind of continue down this road of insanity by giving it an unsigned decimal integer that also fills all of these bits, and we can see that here. If we give it the value 4,294,967,295, explicitly specify that this is an unsigned integer, we are going to get the same value. We negate it, that is going to become 1 again, and all of our compilers are going to succeed. And we can see here that I don't have clang, but I can go ahead and add clang easily enough. 
and in fact I will add the absolute latest Clang, which has some of the best warning reporting that is available on any compiler, and I'm going to turn on everything. And we're going to see that even with everything turned on for our warnings in Clang, we are not going to actually get any message that we are doing anything wrong with our 32-bit unsigned value here. But we can see that Visual C++'s compiler is the only one that actually gives us a meaningful warning that gives us a hint as to what is going on. Our unary minus operator applied to an unsigned type is still going to be an unsigned value. So there's really no way for it to ever give us a signed value, and the standard simply doesn't allow it. So there you go. This is how the value ox ff 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 negated is actually equal to 1. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out my videos from O'Reilly, which I have linked to in the video description below, and be sure to subscribe to C++ Weekly. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.